Yo, it's the Boulay Kev Podcast, Boulay Kev Show. Special guest, my guy in here, Boston's finest. Millie's is here. Cambridge specifically. Cambridge, yeah. okay. You got to help me out there. 617. You know, I, I love Boston. I went to Lawrence once and DJed, and there was some lovely Puerto Rican women in that city. Dominicanas. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, that was a yeah, vibe. Yeah, Lawrence. That's where Nikki Jam is from. Is that where uh, Term's from? That's where Term's from, too. Mm. Yeah. So what's up, man? Good life. You've been, you been grinding, bro. Yeah. Talk to me. I mean, obviously, you got the album coming out on the 20th, but I feel like you've just been so active the last couple of years. Since the last time we, we, we saw each other, since the last time you did the show, I just feel like you've been on your campaign shit, just going crazy. Yeah. When did I do the show? That was... That was 2019, 2018. Yeah. It was when uh, you were, I think, at the time... That's when I was still getting solidified with the bars. Like, yeah. I mean, I've been solidified, but that's when I was checking off all the platforms. Like, I think at that time, Enough was helping out. A yeah, little bit yeah, behind yeah. the scenes, My you know guy, what I'm saying? Yeah. Hell yeah. But yeah, no, nah, I mean, I feel like uh, the last year and some, I feel really feel like you've been thriving during the pandemic, bro. Yeah, no, nah, the pandemic did it. The pandemic did it because what the pandemic did, it evened the playing field for me. So, whereas like a, a rapper that's already booming and doing festivals, you could get all that type of content. Right. Every day your social media looks crazy. You jumping in crowds mm. and um, marsh pits and, and you're next to Kylie Jenner at after right. parties. The pandemic leveled the whole playing field because now you can't do that. So now you got to compete with me song for song, right. video for video, bar for bar. And I'm going to outdo that. You know what I mean? I'm going to outdo you on that. So I feel like like that's where I thrive at. Yeah, I always say, like, I feel like for artists who actually can rap, the pandemic did wonders. Because everyone's listening differently. They're listening at the crib. They're listening in their AirPods. Or they're listening, driving in their car, as opposed to being at the club, standing on a fucking Mm -hmm. couch, digesting, like, microwavable bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, It took out out all, like, the the, the bubblegum shit for a while. Now, you're thriving. Freddie Gibbs was thriving. All the Griselda's on a run during the pandemic. Like, I feel like the bars are, like... With the with the shit that just happened with the locks, kisses at the height of the rap game. It's amazing. Right now. It's like so what, raspy. It, it feels like Nas got the number one album on iTunes. Like I just feel like it's we're kind of like low key in like a renaissance of like dope rap again. Yeah, a lot of the bullshit's out the window right now. Yeah, hell yeah. You feel that way too? Nah, one hundred percent. I feel like um. It's high level rap. You know what I mean? High level rap is, is what high level rap is longevity. Like that shit never goes For away. Sure. If you got that skill set, it'll never ever go away. You know, as far as like you always have a core audience because you have that skill set. Mm. It's like, you know, being able to to uh like like be a chef or some shit. Like you know how to cook. Like that'll always that'll always be helpful in some capacity. Some other shit just comes and goes. If you think of like who's been here forever and who's yeah, it's all the rappers. Nobody. That's yeah, what I be even telling dudes. Think of Drake. Drake is a, a elite MC. Hell yeah, high level rapper. Kendrick, J Cole, high level rap. High all level high level rap. rappers. High level rap. Yeah. No, nah, that's yeah. facts, man. We think about who's been around 20, 25 years. And they yeah, they, but it wasn't the trendy shit, right? You know, so sometimes they, they, I feel like they would even like people would look down on it, like, oh, you rap, oh, yo, you got bars, like try to cast that to the side. Nah, pussy, I got bars. Yeah. I could be here forever. You can't. Yeah. Enjoy your forever. summer. Too. Yeah, yeah. Get hot. That's why I don't trip when I see people like surpass me or whatever. It might be like a younger artist and he gets on and he has a crazy two years. But I know I'm gonna. Ha- I got this shit forever, mm. forever, forever. And I only get better. Give me uh, some of your background. Like, like obviously coming out of Massachusetts. Um, when did you start rapping? Like, when did you start actually recording music, going to the studio, taking shit kind of serious? Um, I've been doing this a long time, bro. Like I, I've been, I've been rapping since like 2010, even 2008 for real. Like, but 2016, I started putting my whole soul into it and taking it serious, serious, serious. Cause I like moved to New York. I got some baggage off of me. Like when I was, when I was rapping before, I just had a, a lot of other shit connected to it, like street shit and whatever was mm-hmm. going on. So that would kind of, you know, um, derail you were like one me. foot in, one foot out. Yeah, and um, just being attached to Massachusetts. But when I when I moved to New York, it was like I kind of took a step back to take a step forward. I had to um compromise, um, like my my living comfortability and mm. shit like that. Like you know what I mean? I had to um, I had like I, I moved to New York. I moved to the Bronx in a roach infested apartment and started over right there. 
with no network. I just knew Seth Free. That was the only person I knew in New York. And I started just building my network over time there from the ground up. And I think that was in 2013. And then in 2016, I finally, um, I cracked the BET cipher. I was able to do that. And it just started going for me. So you had to kind of like what what made you make the decision to get out of your comfort zone and leave? Was it because you were involved in some bullshit back home and you felt like. No, I feel like I I hit a glass ceiling because I was always I always been lit where I'm from. Like in my state, I've been getting paid for features for 10 plus years. You know what I mean? I've been in the newspapers. I did Summer Jam. I was always him where I was from. and Summer Jam? Yeah, Yeah. Jam and Summer Jam. I was always him where I was from. So it's like. I hit this glass ceiling and it just felt like I was a big fish in a small pond. I wanted more. I would go, I would take these trips. I would go to like, you know, South by Southwest or whatever it was or different shit in New York and people wouldn't know me like that. Mm. And I have to, yeah, you got to see things how they are, not how you want them to be. I'd be like, damn, I'm not really that lit. And so that's what made me move to New York. And then it just so happened that like when I was out there, I realized I I could commit to being a, a, a full artist, like, Completely in totality. Boston has always kind of had like an interesting scene. There's always been a scene there, right? There's been guys like, obviously, Static Selected to me is like kind of the go to the last like 10 or 15 years yeah, out of Boston. Bro, One of the facts. greatest producers ever. Shout out to Static. But I just mean like, you know, Cousin Stiz, uh, I think it was Michael Christmas is from out there. Mm-hmm. Um, My people. There's uh, Was Mike Studd from Boston? See from Providence, I don't know, but you know, there was always there's always artists that are active in the city, but I always feel like Boston as like a as like a there's never been like a movement on the mainstream. You know what I'm saying? Well, part of the problem is that like Boston is a small part of Massachusetts, which is but, huge. It, but but it gets credit for the whole Massachusetts facts. So like, I mean, look, I was like, yeah, we got Boston's fight. He's like, yeah, oh, Cambridge. That, that shit Cambridge. gets annoying. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's like everybody looks at the whole mass. If you look at Boston, actually on the map, it's like a small part of Massachusetts. Right. So it's like we got Springfield, Lawrence, Lowell, Worcester, uh, Lynn, Cambridge. You know what I mean? All these different places that produce talent. But I feel like now... um, that's shout out to Bia too. I, I got to shout. Yeah, Bia. like Bia. Yeah. Bia is oh, on yeah, fire. Bia. Right now. Nah, Joiner. We we got Joiner. Yeah, Joiner from Massachusetts. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I feel like um, I feel like that like Boston just had like a stigma with it because when you think of like Boston, you think of like white people and racism and shit like Certainly. that. Like it's hard to break into understand how much culture is in that city, like the Dorchesters, the Roxburys, and Mattapans and mm. shit like that. Like. But I, yeah, I think it was hard for people to um, understand that good music was being made out of Boston or out of Massachusetts. But we pushing the Massachusetts movement now. It's a lot of talent out there. Do you think that that is a uh, misconception about the area, the racist shit? Because we always hear that about the sports fans out of Massachusetts. The you know we you know no, it's not a it's not a misconception, but it's it's two sides to to everything. Right. You know what I mean. That's what I would say. Like, like that exists, but that's not the only thing that of course that, that yeah. exists. Like, I've never been in the TD Garden and heard somebody say some racist shit. Right. Personally, that's w- w- there was that uh the 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 big uh, controversy about uh which player stepped on the damn Celtics guy, and then Big Baby Davis came and spoke up on it. Kim, oh, Kyrie K- Irving. Yeah, yeah, KG spoke up on it. There was Kyrie all this. Irving, yeah. Well, how'd you feel when that happened? I mean, because that's a historic. I mean, I feel like sometimes we get a little too overly sensitive these days. The where it's like, guys, you know, like we're talking about basketball. Like the logo is a little leprechaun, but like not everything yeah, got to no, be connected did, to the did, racist. He shit. did what he was supposed to do. Yeah, but I don't. I, I didn't take it on no racist shit. I just took it like he was saying, "Fuck the Celtics." I mean, yeah, he had a bad, you know, two years in Boston for whatever reason. I mean, yeah. I, a lot of it was probably on him, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Um. You and, and Jada Kiss, obviously fucking with So Raspy, Kiss is, you know, one of the most just down-to-earth, coolest dudes in the rap game. Um, if you know him, you know he's just, you know, he's just, he's humble, and I feel like he's always trying to help out whoever yeah, he fucks yeah, with. Yeah. Even if it's not on some, like, you're signed to me shit, he's always doing for records with up-and-coming artists he rocks yeah, with. definitely, you know what definitely. What's it like working with Kiss, just in general, having him as your big homie, man? It's dope, man. It's like like the kiss that people saw on verses. I see that every day. Facts. Yeah, people think like th- that he. 
I don't know, like, that that's some new shit for him. Nah, that's how he acts on his block with, like, 100 homies around. 100%. Like, the way he cracks jokes and all of that. Like, and then, like, yeah, he, he um, he's just for the culture, man. Like, he, he's a real rapper, bro, at the core. And are, and are you are you signing his label? Yeah, I'm down with Kiss since, I, 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 I've been down with Kiss since. For, for a minute. Yeah, but, like, officially, like, 2017. Yeah, it's crazy because I feel like that versus moment, like you said, it kind of like reminded a lot of people like, yo, Kiss is, they don't say top five dead or alive for, for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Kiss will burn any rapper his age right now. Oh, 100%. No, I mean any rapper his I age. I mean, I. Right now, give any rapper, and I got the utmost respect, the utmost respect for Hove, Nas, M, Kiss will give each one of them a 16 on the same I, beat. Kiss will Burn them. I can agree with you there. That's a fact. For sure. I think too. Was Hove might stand a chance. Nah, just, just in that bar forum. Like it's nah, just 16 when, bars. We're talking about 16 versus yeah, 16. Yeah, we're talking about 16 bars with the goats, with all of the goats. These yeah. are the goats. That's why I'm, you know, talking yeah. about them. But Kiss is burning shit. I just think too, like with that verses, I was telling everybody before it happened. I was like, man, the one thing people are not factoring into this battle is the locks still actually fuck with each other. They're still actually yeah, chemistry, family. Chemistry, chemistry, hell Camaraderie, yeah. chemistry. These guys are still with each other. My man right there, Reem Scully, hurt, hurt. He thought this was winning? He's no, still hurt. He been on Twitter saying that he want to do a rematch on live and the, the songs, if they match, he's hurt. You know, a lot of people were hurt by that. Man. Uh, you know what, though? L-O-X, baby. <laughs> when I say something, my problem is this. It's a lot of people that's acting like they don't know Kiss is a goat already. Now, nah, people, people, but... We, we know what the difference Nah, but you know what the difference is now is... The, nah, listen, the difference is Kiss, this versus has done something that no other versus really has done, and I feel like now... I was on academic shit right now and they just posted a kiss verse he did with Dream Doll and said, is this the verse of the year? I'm like, that shit ain't happening. You know, now like the younger kids who might not have known the pedigree that Jada Kiss, when they did that fucking, yo man, but y'all ain't got nothing for them females. Oh man, it was a murder. And when, when Kiss came back with the female bag, oh my God. They did the Jenny from the block and the Mariah. I said, it's, this is embarrassing at this point. <laughs> we got Grammys. Y'all got Grams. And then yeah. they, I forget what. But shouts, to, shouts to Jones, though. Oh, That's for my sure. guy. Listen, I love Dipset. And like on the surface, I can see how you could be like, I got Dipset winning the battle before it happened. But once you really start thinking like, man, Jada was on. I mean, the locks were on, you know, life after death. They were on. It's dark and hell is hot. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is different. It's a different bag. It's just a whole different bag. They the wash G unit. I think so. Wash. I think so. It's undebatable. Yeah, oh, dip said G unit would have been nice. Dip said G unit would have been fire. Yeah, but the thing is, is that camaraderie. But then I don't know, like you, like Fifty's tough to wash. But alone, he don't need G unit. Fifty just needs 50 to stand just, on stage and 50 talk just, shit. Fifty could just play Get Rich or Die Trying from front to back. And just have the mic and just troll people. That's the one thing. I would love to see Jada and 50 on stage just 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 throwing shots at each other because they're both hilarious. <laughs> Type shit. But yeah, I was like, I was so disappointed with Cab. I was expecting Cab to say some funny shit. I was like, man, anytime Jim Jones was performing his shit, Cameron was in the back with like the aunt. I was like, damn. Styles was with kids. Like they was with each other. That shit was historical though. And they ain't do no street shit. No street nah, shit. what I love. Nah, listen, they man. They were in the crowd. That wasn't gonna that do that wasn't, nothing. Because when they nah, so because when they performed, hey, yo, when hey, they bro, hey, what I love, man, we gotta, when they played the street shit, they played that bird gang that shit. There was some water over there. They played that bird gang shit. But they can't. The stack bundles was bird gang. That ain't dipset. That ain't dipset. Nah, man. They hey, man. Shout out to Jim. Shout out to Cam. I love Dipset, but it was a definitive L, man. Um, so, who all do you have on this new album? You were, you say got you got G Herbo, Kiss. Yeah. I got Herbo. I got Kiss. I got Asian Doll. I got Benny the Butcher. I got Dada the Dealer. Eight Zip from Boston and Y Jizzle from Boston. 
you put out a video with Asian Doll, right? Yeah. I saw that. That's kind of a random collab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't see that one coming. Yeah, we met we met in a crazy way. We met um We met in a strip club in Atlanta. Bro, I was literally about to say, I bet you better at a strip club. Oh yeah, you know that. We met in a strip club in Atlanta and um and 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 I was I was with my people who knew her and we left out and I had the culling in the 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 Rolls right. truck or whatever. And we all jumped in the Rolls truck and we were gonna go to the next spot and then shots just started going off. Bah, 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 like little machine gun fire and shit. And um and I'm bent, I'm smacked, you know what I'm saying? And my man is like, yo, get down, get out the car, get down. But I feel like the shots aren't too close to me type shit. So I just I get out the car or whatever. I get down, but like before I do that, like I just look in the passenger side and like Asian dolls just in the passenger side, like fixing her makeup in the mirror. While Unfazed. The sh- while the shots are going off. Look, I'm like, shit ends. I'm like, yo, you were doing your makeup while the shots was going off? She's like, man, I'm trying to get to my next destination. Some shit like that. And I'm like, oh no, she's different. And then we locked this since then. So yeah. Yeah, she did a freestyle for us a couple years ago. That was that she's was fire. that was solid. Yeah, it was good. No, she's fire. Surprise, she's fire. Well, she was. Uh, I think she was used to be with Gucci, right? G Herbo, fire. Yeah, Benny. That's. I mean, the Herbo shit came from high level rap too because he um he posted my um bars on nine five freestyle. But I had known Herbo since um Smokers Club tour. Right, right, right. But he posted my um my uh, bars on nine five freestyle. And then I just knew, like, ah, right, he gonna give me a yeah, record, definitely. Shit. And, shit. and when I hit him, he's like, hell yeah, let's do it. We did that shit out here, so that was fire. It's gonna be my quickest million. Are you gonna do another? Um, you did a collab tape with Dave. Is there another artist you would want to do a collab tape with, or someone who you're talking to? I don't know. Like, I never met him, but I want to do a collab tape with Mozzie, though. That would be hard. Ooh, yeah, with Mozzie, cause he got like ball work. I like some of the Mozzie can rap his ass off, and he got pain. Yes. Yeah, like I, Mozzie's I, one of my favorite rappers yeah, in the world. I, I, I want to lock him with Mozzie. Have you um, you haven't met Mozzie yet? No, nah, but um, we got mutual people though. I want him to lock him with Mozzie. Yeah, that's that's about it. That'd be crazy. I like to do some shit with Young Ma too. She's fire. That's like the type of rappers that I I like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man, I'm so glad the that rappers that could rap, but they still. I, I like to, I just love popping. when East Coast people tap in with Mozzie because I feel like he's oh no he's high level hell yeah high level MC and I just don't think like outside of like over here he I feel like he should get more respect in those conversations you know what I'm saying blah da da hey interrupting the interview to tell you about our good friends at Odd Socks now as you can see I always have my Odd Socks on baby you know what I'm saying ooh shout out to my bony ass knees um listen go to oddsocksofficial.com they got all the craziest socks. These are the outsiders. You know what I'm saying? They got SpongeBob. They got Cheech and Chong. Listen, Breaking Bad, Godfather, whatever you need, they got it. And now they have underwear. That's right. You can get your Odd Socks underwear. The boxer briefs are the best underwear that you could ever fit on your ass. Trust me when I tell you. These are Chucky draws. What you know about top ramen underwear, all right? Go to oddsocksofficial.com. Use the keyword Bootleg Kevin, check out, and you'll save 20% off of, of your order. Underwear, masks, slippers, socks, whatever you need, they got it. Oddsocksofficial.com, keyword bootleg Kevin, check out, save 20%. Yo, you have a relationship with Shoddy, right? Yes, sir. Um, How's he doing? Are you still in contact with him? He's doing great. Every day I talk to him, he just says, uh, another day at the office, man. Getting some, you know getting I mean? some rest, working out. It's another day at the office, yeah. That's uh, you know, there's this this whole situation that he's been a part of just kind of got reignited online with this Whack 100 interview and uh, a lot of that stuff. Kind of, what's your take on on you know? It seems to be like I feel like there's some sort of part of the industry that's starting to try to push Six Nine back in our face a little bit. I felt like shit had kind of got put to bed after he put his shit out and it kind of flopped. But like, kind of, what's your thoughts on what's going on right now with all that shit? A rat, a rodent. I don't know. Like I don't. I don't even be. I don't even be watching the shit he do or whatever. It's, it's, that's like you know he sent people to jail. He took people away from their kids, man. Like he a rat. He a rodent. He the scum of the earth, bro. There's no. That's like me sitting here and discussing a pedophile. Like you already know what it is. Like 
That he is a because because I think that that's what the one thing Wack was saying. No, he's a rat. He's a rat. Yeah, because Wack was like he's nah, a nah, civilian nah, who nah. told the truth. Nah, 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 nah. Once you do a street act, that that takes you out of that discussion. Yeah. You consciously do a street act. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's you're not, what you're not a civilian no more. That's what glasses. If mean. you choose to pick up a gun and walk outside right now, you know what's you coming. You're not with a that. civilian no more. That's a illegal crime. You're a criminal. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nah. That's kind of uh, you know. Shout out to my guy. He's G- a rodent. G Malone out here. That's kind of what he's he said. He's a rodent. Once you once you knowingly do something criminal, hell yeah. And you if are you do now it with, involved in that life, and you got to know what that shit comes with, right? Period. Now, if you're a civ- that's called accountability. Mm. And I don't even fuck with people who aren't accountable in, in real normal life. life. Yeah, in normal life. Let alone when people's lives are on the line. And you send the motherfuckers to jail because you're not accountable for your actions. Fuck out of here. Scum of the earth. There it is. He's a broken man. He, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you got broken. You, you let them people break you. I feel me. I got homies doing natural life right now, but they're not broken. They could look in the mirror every day. Still call me in high spirits type shit. When 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 Shotty was running with with, with with six nine, and you were cool with him when he was out of jail, was there ever any conversations about like watch out for that guy? Because I think obviously he had rainbow hair. He seemed to be extremely extravagant online from the jump. No, I never, I never, um, I never went around him like that. Like I had been around him on like the video set of like the um, the get the strap shit with Fifty Cent or whatever. Mm-hmm. But that was like the furthest extent of it. But what I do know is Shadi really loved him though, and Shadi put in a lot of pain behind him. But like Shadi really loved him. Like it's intimate conversations from me with me and Shadi where I knew like before all that shit hit the fan, he's like, Nah, I love that dude, man. I risk my life for that dude, like. Shotty loved that kid. They like was, they had a genuine connection. Hell yeah, bro. He would have went to the end of the earth to protect yeah, that, that kid. He would have did whatever he could to make that kid be successful. And and that and that and kid he did. that kid knows that shit. And he did. Yeah. When I went to the I went to the um to to his sentencing, and um, cause Shotty used to always tell me. I used to ask him like, yo, because uh, he was trying to sign me, and we were trying to figure it out, like if we could. Mix the Treyway shit with the so raspy, raspy shit, shit or whatever. And um, he would always ask me. I mean, I would always ask him, like, yo, what about the feds, bro? Ain't the feds coming for y'all? And he'd be like, hell no, nah, Millie's man. I ain't did a crime in so long. He's all like, you know what I mean? Shit like that. But then when we was at his sentencing, like, the judge listed off all the pain he put in. And I mean, like, every two months it was something. And I was like, damn, bro, like... You were really going crazy. He was like, "Yeah, I should have been more hands off." You know what I mean? But does he, that, was, he was putting in pain for that kid. Does that make like like when you see shit like that? Or I mean, obviously, there's been. I feel like hip hop is under a microscope with the feds for some reason right now. Like, yeah. do you do you not only on that? Sh- but this is why, not to cut you off. This is why it's under a microscope with the feds because if you think about it, right? All right, you were you you were a federal officer or some shit. You. You got to bring your boss some cases, right? Mm. So you got these dudes over here selling this, doing this. You got these dudes over here selling this, doing this. And then you got these dudes over here selling this, doing this. But they're connected to a successful rapper. Whose case is your boss going to take? He's going to take the one with the successful rapper. Because that shit's going to hit the media. And then it makes like, it's like your PR campaign is done for you. Also, it's probably easier to get those guys because not for nothing, it's a lot of self snitching going on on the internet in the hip hop world. Yeah, but they be taking shit out of context too. Like though. I be seeing some of these kids from Jacksonville, and I'm like, man, where is their team? Because there, there's like bodies piling up out there, and these motherfuckers is like on the internet making records, and I'm like, bro, what is going on? <laughs> like, you know, like I feel like, do, do you feel like there's like certain things you won't share online or sharing bars or sharing records? Because even if it's fictional, even if it's some hip hop shit, you're afraid that maybe like how it might get taken out of context if there were to ever be a situation like that. I don't involve myself in any crime whatsoever. So, no. What about um? You know, moving around because you you're I always see you everywhere, bro. You're in Atlanta, you in LA, you move around nicely. I'm in Columbia. I'm the only white rapper that does that too. But I was gonna say, like, you know, there's been so many people getting caught slipping, whether it's Nip, whether it's uh King Vaughn, whatever it is. How how careful are you when you're moving around outside of your like where you're from? I mean, listen, I, you have a 
This is probably the biggest entourage she's had in a while. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. Very careful. We got we to protect the brand. I've never been touched. Like, I've been rapping like 15, 10, 10 15 years. Like, you know, I, no, nothing ever happened to me in that whole time. That's fair. And it's not gonna like, you know, that, that's just how I, I wake up and feel every day. Who was your, when you were like, when you were growing up listening to hip hop, being a, a kid from Massachusetts, who was like that artist you looked up to in your city that made you feel like, oh shit, it's possible to make it out of here? I saw, um, I saw Smoke Bulger in the, in the newspaper. You ever heard of him? Mm -mm. Smoke Bulger. He was a big rapper when I was coming up. Facts. And he still, he's got to deal with Rick Ross right now. So Smoke Bulger inspired me. I was at my school. I, I used to go to school, this little sped school in Charlestown. And I got the Boston Herald one morning and I looked at it. And he was on like like one of the front pages. That inspired me. Then other than that, I don't know. Like nobody was really nobody was really. Because you probably came up after like the Made Man. Stiz, like cousin shit. Stiz inspired me like later on in life. Yeah, he's killing it. He's dope, man. He's a good dude too. Yeah. That's my brother. So, you know, but but people, but like Joyner inspires me. Bia inspires me. Anybody anybody who's popping out of Massachusetts inspires me because it's one of the hardest places to make it out of. I think we're changing that slowly, but if you made if you made it to to some sort of national popularity fame, like I salute you because you you did good, you did great. You moved, obviously. Static had to move to New York. Do you feel like for any kids who are listening from your city, from your state that are watching this, do you think it's a smart play for them to? You know, get out of the comfort zone and maybe yeah, but only when you get booming in mass. You still got to get booming in mass. Conquer like, home first, yeah, then hell get up yeah. Out of you there. still got to be played on a launch pad with E Double and Shot Chubby Dub. E you still gotta, you gotta be known. If your name isn't known, when, when I left Massachusetts, at least seventy five percent of the whole fucking state knew my name. You know what I mean? Yeah, you had already done what you could yeah, do at home. Like if you don't know me, you maybe a freshman in college going to one of these schools, and you from Iowa or something. But like blue collar Massachusetts people knew who I was, so I got to that level, and then I moved. And I feel like even like, like like Bia moved when she got the deal with Pharrell. So if you get a deal, and you gotta move or something, but. Yeah, I feel like you should move out of mass after you after you conquer it. You know what I mean? What is, uh, in your opinion, the best Boston movie? Because there are some amazing ones. The Departed. I was the gonna town. Say, no, the, I'm fucking with the town. I'm you're going with, with the, the town. town over the Departed. I'm fucking with the town because Slane's in the town. And Slane's my guy. Slane's the homie. Yeah, and that shit was just flavor. Like, I couldn't. The, the dude, because I grew up with them type of dudes. Mm. Like in Cambridge, just like my neighborhood was mostly black, but then there's like um, like a, a part of Cambridge called East Cambridge, and it's like those tough type of white boys. And then I went to school in Charlestown where they made that movie. So I grew up with those type of dudes. And Jeremy Renner, when I found out he was Australian, my mind was blown. Because he killed it. Because so he did fucking good, kid. He did great. You know what I mean? Yeah, he did great. <laughs> He did fucking good, kid. Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy because if you like actually know people from Boston, and then you watch a movie where they're trying to do the Boston accent. And not and everybody do has right. that shit. I don't have that. Like, You don't have the heavy, uh, get in the fucking no. car. Get in the fucking car, dude. Yeah. Yo, something something about. I did good right there. I think you did. I mean, I think you can hit it, bro. Shout out. Every time I go to Boston and DJ, bro, I, and there's like the drunk Boston white chicks, I'll just be weak as fuck the way they be talking. Bro. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo, can you play some fucking Pitbull? Play some fucking Pitbull, dude. Oh, shout out to Boston, man. Um, is this going to be the only project you drop after so you can drop this project next Friday? Is it, are you done for the rest of the year? Just working the album? Or you got some other shit ready? I'm going to probably work the album for the year. I might drop some more music, but yeah, like I, this, this shit is like a home cooked meal. This is soul food. Like this is, this, this is it, man. This is the culmination of everything that's happened over this pandemic for me. So yeah, I feel like you, like I said, man, I mean, you've been shooting videos for every fucking thing. Hell yeah. Shout out my, my man Tange. Like, I feel like God gave me like a, a videographer to, cause that's what I needed. Mm. Somebody who could run around with me, same ambition and drive, shoot my shit, get it out there. Because like, we got shit with 800,000 and damn near a million views that we just fucking freestyled. Like, just shot. Like, hey, yeah. let's shoot a video like, right yeah. now. We didn't, we're not like, playing Even last that. night, before I did the other press thing that I did, we um we were in the parking lot. We just started shooting a video because he's nice like that. So it's like, I feel like that's people being able to see me in that capacity took me 
to the level, hey, man. A uh, videographer is important. One that you yeah. vibe with? I mean, that's like videographer, I'll- producer, videographer, producer, good engineer. Do you have like a like in house production team you work with? I work with this kid Ray Beats. He's from Albania. He's 16 years old. He Albania. lives in Albania. Shout out to Action Bronson. He sends me a beat every morning. Wow. He did the Asian Doll shit. He did the G Herbo shit. He did the Jada record. He did the Benny record. He's disgusting, bro. He's 16 this years is a old. 16 year old kid in Albania. In Albania. The Albania goat. Hey, Albania low key uh, in music is popping. They got Bam Bam. They got uh, Gashi. Dua Lipa. G- Gashi. Yeah. Yep. Nah, they doing their thing, man. Hell yeah, they got Ray Beats too. Shout out, and Ray they Beats. got Ray Beats. Damn it! Yeah, shout what out to Ray. About? Okay, let's let's we 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 conquered. So the town is the best Boston movie ever. Hell yeah, I'm right. It's valid. Okay, how about this? Blue Hill, Blue Hill Ave. Yeah, if you want to go the other side of Boston, Blue Hill Ave. I haven't seen that. That's a movie. Yeah, that's that's. That's that's, that's the, the joint with that's the other real side of Boston. Like Blue Blue Hill Ave got nothing to do with the town. Mm. What's the joint with um the the one that popped off Matt Damon and Ben Affleck? With Good Will Hunting. Hunting. That's I mean that was a good movie. I mean it's cool. I like that gangster shit. Like I, I like mean we're it. talking gangster movies. It's different. Yeah. Okay. What about this? Who if you if you had if you had your opportunity to have a meal with any Boston legend ever? I mean, there's so many legends from the city of Boston. I mean, they don't even got people be from Boston. It could be Larry Bird. It could be Ben Affleck. It could be Matt Damon. There's so many legends from the city of Boston. If you could have a meal with one of them, like pick pick the all time goat that you would want to sit down with from your city. I sit down with me. I don't know. Come on, man. Who? who Damn, I don't know, man. David I'm, Ortiz, KG. I, I, yeah, I, I'd get some Plantanos with David Ortiz or some shit. Like, I feel like that's not that's no. Not, if you want athletes, like, no, yeah, I mean anybody. It don't got to be just athletes. But you are saying people from there? No, I said it's got to be a Boston legend. They don't got to necessarily. Oh, be KG, from, yeah, 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 KG. KG, and I know KG, but I still sit down for dinner with him because he's just who he is. KG, yeah, Kevin Garnett, facts. You got the Celtics tattoo, right? Yeah. How you feeling about uh you know Dennis Schroeder going over to the Celtics for that five point nine? Man, they should have signed my dog Isaiah Thomas, man. For real. They did Isaiah dirty though. Hey, but you know what? Um, he just put up eighty one points in the uh the rec game, and um, I guess he's, he's still good for fifteen a night in the league. I, I can see it. They gave him a little ten day contract, and he came back and was putting up fifteen. He's like blackballed or something. I swear to God. I can see the Celtics bringing him back. Try to. Because nah, Danny Ainge ain't there no more. I feel like he's blackballed in the NBA. Yeah, I mean the Celtics. I feel like had a bit of a uh, the off season was was underwhelming. Brad Stevens is running this shit now. They kind of shipped out. Of, I mean Dennis Schroeder for five million. Nah, but been. next year we we gonna do good next year though. I think that's what they're they're, they're yeah, trying yeah, to grab someone get like next Bradley Bill or something like that. We'll see. Y'all were supposed to get AD too. Shut All that planning and not trading them draft picks. Never but, got AD. But we're competitive every year. What team we root for? The Suns? Hey, we was in the finals. Yeah. This was y'all first time in the finals. We've been in the conference finals. Hey, and we've shit won like that zero rings. Life. Yeah. Zero. So listen, you have the you have the most probably historically successful franchise. Because if you really want to go with the Lakers, those Minneapolis rings don't count them. That the, COVID ring don't count. The Celtics, to <laughs> me, are the most historically successful franchise. I mean, like you said. The year uh, Kyrie was out, they went to the Eastern Conference Finals. Bro, it was, to the when Isaiah Thomas was there, we were to the Conference Finals. Like we go, we got. I think Tatum been to the Conference Finals three years, if I'm not mistaken, and he only played for like four or five years. Yeah, shout out to Tatum. Um, anything else, man? Obviously, I know you. Uh, you know, are you are you going to start get fucking with anything outside of the hip hop shit, like maybe acting or just? I was just riding through here looking at all like the big movie signs and shit, and I was like, yeah, like I I got to get an act. Dude, you could get your slain on for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. He got to plug me in. Man. You could be like the new go to goon in Boston gangster movies. That'd be hot. Yeah, I like that. You just said hard. Hot, you know what I'm saying? You got it. You just that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could do acting. Anything else though? Like you're like, are you like investing? Are you like getting your your feet in anything besides the rap shit right now? Are you just focused on on popping the rap shit off. Yeah, I mean, I got I got high level rap right now, so that's like something that like me and East kind of came up with the concept HLR, mm. and um, it's kind of like a fraternity, but we're coming with the merch. You know, high level rap, high level life, high right. level high level high lifestyle rap. 
you know, all of that. Um, but but that's a brand I want to I want to um, create something bigger for that, whether it's an app or something of that nature. But yeah, high level rap is the movement. So who's your starting five MCs right now, excluding yourself? Just in all the rap, if we're talking high level rap, starting five. Take Davies out the conversation too. Like alive. Yeah, just right now. No, no, who's just doing it right now? I'm not talking about all time alive. So we taking East out the convo. Taking yourself out the convo. And we taking Kiss out the convo. I mean, you could put Kiss. I'm just saying about who's on fire. Like, like, let's say the most active current rappers. Jada's one of them. Yeah, he's number one. He's the hottest rapper right now. I don't disagree. Um, Conway. Benny. Damn, who else is nice? Like I said, I like Mozzie. Mozzie's in there. Um, Herbo. There it is. Yeah. That's a nice starting five. Yeah. All parts of the all parts of the country. Yeah. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody, but that's a that's a solid five though. Solid. Well look, the album comes out next Friday. Yes, sir. Go get that shit. Uh you can go get you got the merch and all that shit going up. Yeah, the merch is going crazy. Any H- tour H- shit coming up? Maybe. I, I got some dates with Conway on the road. Mm. Um, I don't think I announced that, so I'm announcing that here. Yeah, I got I got a few dates on the Conway tour. And then um, I got some other shows, but I got to see how this COVID shit plays out. Yeah, man. I just saw uh, one of the homies, uh, Chris Webby, just t- canceled his whole tour over the COVID shit. He was supposed to go on tour with Dizzy Wright, and uh, they were like, the mandates are too crazy. We don't want to ask our fans because a lot of the venues you got to be vaccinated to go in. Oh yeah, he don't he don't play that vaccinated shit. And so he was in Colorado. He was like, "Fuck vaccinations!" <laughs> Ninety thousand people put their hands up like, <laughs> "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's different." Shout uh, out Chris Webby, great guy, man. Yeah, great guy, That's my boy. Yeah, 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 great guy. Well, look, man, appreciate you pulling up, and, and we're gonna do you. a freestyle. So there's gonna be another YouTube video where he's doing high level bars. Yeah, boom.